Hi, today we will be reviewing gestational diabetes. So, by definition, gestational diabetes is any degree of glucose intolerance that is first recognized during pregnancy.、Uh, it's important to note that it's first recognized during pregnancy, so any diabetes that is diagnosed before、um, pregnancy is not deemed as gestational diabetes. So, it is mentioned in the textbook. Book that pregnancy normally increases insulin resistance because of certain placental hormone that increases the insulin tolerance, including the growth hormone, corticotropin releasing hormone, which is CRH, placental lactogen, and progesterone, all contribute to the increase in glucose intolerance. But those Patient, especially GDM patient who's who has pancreatic insufficiency, that means the pancreas cannot tolerate.、Um, I mean, pancreas cannot secrete insulin enough in order to tolerate those glucose intolerance that is given by pregnancy. Then those patient、uh, will become gestational diabetes because you cannot deal with that glucose intolerance with sufficient insulin release. The risk factor then for gestational diabetes will be as follows: severe obesity and family history of T two DM, previous GDM, impaired glucose metabolism, glycosuria at first prenatal visit, and multiple gestation, and even maternal age, which is over twenty five years old, of age. Uh, so, personal history of impaired glucose tolerance or gestational diabetes in a previous pregnancy is one important factor, and any medical condition or setting that is associated with development of diabetes itself. So, actually, the risk factor quite over overlap with the risk factor for diabetes.、Uh, so, such as metabolic syndrome, polycystic ovary syndrome, which we call as PCOS, and current use of gluc glucocorticoids,、uh, and hypertension、uh, would all contribute. As risk factor for developing GDM, and since obesity here is mentioned as risk factor for developing GDM, lowering weight、uh, is proven to decrease the risk for GDM. So, how do you screen、um, GDM? So, as you have seen. The risk factor there is low risk patient and average risk patient and high risk patient. So low risk patient、um, does not really need routine screening, but if the patient seems to have average risk, which means that normally the patient would go through routine screening at around twenty four、uh, to twenty eight week with fifty gram glucose loading at fasting state. So if When given fifty gram of glucose at fasting state, if the patient shows、um, glucose level of more than higher than one hundred forty milligram per deciliter, then it means the patient should be、um, done more tests.、Um, we should run doc doctors should run more tests in order to see if she、uh, the patient is really GDM or not. So after screening, there is a two.、Um, the screening can be done in two steps or even one step. So the one step procedure is、um, screening and diagnosing at the same time. So what I have told you before is screening. Fifty gram、uh, OGTT is screening, and then if it's deemed positive in the screening. Then the patient should go through 100 gram OGTT, or it can be done in one step, which is 75 gram OGTT. So, if you are as a doctor, if you're suspicious that this patient may have GDM because he has a high risk, like the family history or previous impaired glucose tolerance while pregnancy, then do not be assured that by just one test and. The doctor recommended to repeat blood blood glucose test between twenty four to twenty eight week, or if you think there is a suggestive symptom of glucose intolerance. So diagnosis is done、um, under this criteria. 
So it differs between 100 gram OGTT and 75 gram OGTT. And 100 gram OGTT requires the doctor to measure the blood glucose level um, four times fasting, one hour, two hour, and three hour. But 75 OGTT, the doctor has to check blood glucose blood glucose level for three times. So if in 100 OGTT, if there is more than two abnormal results, then it's deemed positive. But in 75 gram OGTT, one abnormal result may mean that the patient is actually GDM. So GDM is important because the doctor should know, okay, doctor can know the, its complications, can foresee complications, and can help patient by preventing those complications. Those include preeclampsia, hydramnios, macrosomia. This is one complication that is very well known because high glucose level will induce high insulin level, which will make the baby very large for a gestational age. And fetal organ megaly may be one part of macrosomia and maternal and infant birth trauma because the fetus, the baby, will be very big at birth. And primary cesarean delivery, that's pretty frequently done for a GDM patient. And prenatal mortality is higher for a GDM patient. And it is, it is said that there is more stillbirth babies that is born under GDM patient and neonatal hypoglycemia is another a complication because the fetus will be mm, chronically exposed to high glucose level inside the uterus and may uh, may secrete more insulin so the fetus will have pancreatic hyperplasia but then when after birth, the fetus cannot get all the glucose from mother, but the fetus is very familiar with the environment where the glucose comes out a lot, and the fetus, and I mean the baby after birth, um, secretes a lot of insulin even when there is no glucose. So that's why the fetus falls into, I mean the baby falls into hypoglycemia. And it's important to note that there is no evidence that fetal abnormalities increases with GDM. Uh, Long-term complications um, not only includes type 1 or 2 DM, actual diabetes, not gestational diabetes, but also uh, it includes inc increased risk for developing cardiovascular disease. And Offsprings may also have higher risk of obesity, glucose intolerance, metabolic syndrome, and autism. So how do you manage gestational diabetes? So in order to manage the glucose level, the patient should have diabetic diet that is indicated here and also should monitor ketonuria in order that the ketone does not affect um, fetus in an adverse, adverse way. And the exercise is proven to um, improve glucose intolerance and glucose monitoring is essential in GDM patient. And the mainstay of treatment is actually insulin. And insulin therapy should be started under the following criteria. Actually, there is no set criteria for starting insulin therapy, but these are suggested in the gu guideline. And it's, it's interesting to note that the usual medication that is given to usual DM patient, which is oral hyperglycemic control, metformin or glaburide, they are not recommended um, to the GDM patient. And it's from literature, there's metformins or glaburides or oral, oral hyperglycemic control agents does not have uh, better result than insulin therapy. So insulin therapy is recommended for GDM patient. And at delivery, um, literature says that the, um, the GDM patient can be in, induced can have induced delivery 
at a certain time. But usually because of fetal macrosomia, GDM patient usually goes through cesarean section. So at labor, it's important to check maternal glucose level regularly since intrapartum maternal hyperglycemia leads to an adverse neonatal outcome. And it's also important to prevent neonatal hypoglycemia for the reason I have told you before, the pancreatic, uh, hyper, um, pancreatic hyperplasia. And if glucose level is over 120, it may need IV insulin, but it differs from guideline to guideline. Some guidelines suggest higher criteria, but it's, it's better to monitor the glucose and even after delivery, uh, the doctor should check glucose level from in like 24 to 70 hours to see that the patient is recovering from hyperglycemia. After um, delivery, um, there might be three ways for the patient. One way is that the patient may be diagnosed with actual DM and then the patient may go through DM treatment. And another patient might have glucose intolerance, but not to the point that it is diabetes. Then they should be monitored and they should go through dietary management and exercise uh, so that it does not develop into actual diabetes. And norm normal patient, if the patient is deemed normal, then the patient should be warned about the future, future risk of diabetes. And the patient should always be assessed for their glucose intolerance because there, for, diabetes, for GDM patient, there's higher risk of developing diabetes afterwards. So the patient is usually um, uh, usually checked six within six to twelve months after delivery to see if the patient is recovering or is, uh, has actually developed diabetes or going through glucose intolerance. There is an um, interesting literature that says breastfeeding may decrease their long-term risk. So as a doctor, you could recommend breastfeeding. Mm, and it's important to follow up the patient in the long term. And reassessment is in the guideline. It says it's every three years, but I think they, it's up for the patient and the doctor to manage how frequently they want to get, they want to be checked. So I have prepared a short case study. It's uh, the information in this case study has been modified and simplified. So if you are a medical student preparing for a case study, this is not the format you should follow. So the patient is 29 year old female who is pregnant for seven weeks plus three days. And she has came she has come to the hospital complaining abdominal pain. Previously, she has given birth to 4.46 kilogram male at 38th week of her pregnancy in her first pregnancy through cesarean section two years ago. What is of note here is that she has a family history of DM in her mother's side and her vital appeared stable and in her laboratory result, uh, although she has, uh, although the possible might have run lot, lots of other labs, including CBCs or even infection studies because she has complained of abdominal pain, but she didn't have any infection or any abnormality in electro electrolytes or CBCs, but she had high fasting glucose and HPA1C again proved that she has high glucose. So diagnostic plan is confirming that um, she is GDM. She may be GDM. 
So sh the doctor has run 75 gram OGT TV because um, usually the, it starts with screening process, but at this time it's highly suspicious. So the do doctor might have wanted to run the 75 gram OGT TV for the purpose of screening and diagnosing. And it obviously shows that it's going over every point of reference. So it's obviously GDM. The patient has been diagnosed with GDM and the treatment, as I, as I have told you, is insulin. So she has been prescribed insulin and because uh, the fetus was big enough, the patient had gone for a cesarean section, although it does not really ex exceed 4.5 kilogram criteria, but still um, cesarean section was done and she has given to 4.3 kilogram male and she has planned to be assessed uh, her glucose level or her glucose intolerance in 6 to 20 weeks after her delivery. Here's a reference and thank you for watching this video.